Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to make the player look in a certain area. So the player's camera is going to change direction and rotation to look at a certain thing. And this can be used to just draw the player's attention, or for a jump scare, or for a hint. Anything that you want, this will work perfectly. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So the way I've got this set up is that when I walk forwards through this area, it's going to make me look over at the person over there. So if I had to just look this way and walk forwards, you see it's going to turn my camera smoothly over here. And you can do this in different ways, so it will snap, be quicker, be longer, whatever it is that you want. And you can also even add a sound effect on there as well if you wanted to. And we can also have it so it repeat doing it more than once, or just happen one time only. Completely up to you. But this is what we're going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create something called a blueprint interface. And this is just so that we can communicate between different blueprints nicely and efficiently. So we'll hit control space to open our content browser, find some empty space, right click, go to blueprint and create a blueprint interface. I'll name this BPI underscore look at, for example, as that is what makes the most sense for me. And we'll open this up straight away. In here, I'll name this function look at, and I'll add an input with this being look at target, or actually I'll just do target. And then what we can do here is set this to be an actor. We can also make it spe a specific actor as we are gonna be creating an actor. However, you may just want this to be general actors so you can have this for other things. You can have this for AI, for buildings, for a window, for a tree, for a, an objective that you can collect, or a key, for example, whatever it is that makes sense for you. So let's just put actor. We can then close this straight away as that is all we need to do in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create an actor for us to look at for an example for this video. So we will right click, go to blueprint class and create an actor. And I'll name this BP underscore target. You can name this whatever you want. But again, since this is just an example for me, I'm going to be just naming it target. But again, you can do this for whatever you want or have just a blueprint for this like I have. I'm going to open it up straight away as well. In here. I'm going to add in an arrow just so I as the developer can see where it is and what I'm doing. And then I'm also going to create a box collision. And this box collision is what's going to trigger the looking at function. So we'll compile and save that. And I'm not going to move anything about in here because we're going to be doing that in the level. So we'll go to the construction script. We'll drag in this box collision. And out of this, we will set relative transform and make sure that it is relative and the transform. Connect that in there, right click on new transform, promote it to a variable, and then we'll call this one collision transform. So now every time we drag this blueprint into level, we can have more than one and we can change where the collision box is going to be for each individual one so that you can have the actor itself that you want to look at in a completely different place to where you're going to be walking through it to, to trigger it. So we also want to take instance editable and expose on spawn compile and save that and that is all good. Now we'll go to the event graph so that we can actually trigger this. We'll delete these three nodes, right click on the box collision in the top left, go to add event and add on component begin overlap. Then out of this, come out of other actor and what we're going to do is call the function that we made in our interface at the start. So I am named that simply look at, you can see we have BPI look at, look at message and we're going to get the look at message there. And the target here, so you might want to actually change the name of that because we've got two targets. So for example, look at target might have been a better name, but essentially variable that we created, drag out of that and just get a reference to self. Compile and save that. And this is now done perfectly. So when we walk through this box collision, which we can move to wherever we want, it's going to call this event inside of the actor, which overlapped the box, which will obviously be the player. So now we need to open a player blueprint and set up what this event actually does. So we'll close this, go into our player blueprint, which for me is in content, third person blueprints, BP third person character. And then we're going to go to class settings up at the top. Then we have interfaces. We'll go to implemented interfaces and we'll press add and then search for the one which we created, which I named mine BPI underscore look at. We'll add that. And now you see on the left, we have interfaces. And we have look at here, which is the message or the event that we created. So you can double click on that to add it into your event graph. And you can see we have event look at 
and target, which is the variable we created. And so this is going to get the variable from the blueprint that we just set up. So let me open that back up again and show you. So when this is called, that's the interface, sorry, let me open up the actor. So when this event is called, this blueprint here is going to be coming through target. It will be called in here and that will spit it out here. So we can have access to this specific blueprint, which is great because that's what we want to look at. So we'll get the location for it. So what we want to do is we're going to hold down S and left click to get a sequence. And then we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting that into then zero. So it's the first thing that happens. And then we're also going to create a variable called should loop. We can keep this as a Boolean, compile and set its default value to true. And then we're going to connect that into the condition of this branch here. So we'll only fire this off if this variable is true. Then we're going to hold down D and left click to get a delay. I'm just going to set this something to very small like 0.01. And this is just to make sure that we don't get any crashes and errors of an infinite loop. Because we just need to give the system a little bit of time just to calculate what's happening. Then what we're going to do is we need to set the rotation of the camera. But we also need to figure out where we want it to be facing. So we're going to come out of actor from event look at here and we're going to get the actor location. So where is the location of what we want to look at? Then we also want to get the location of where the player is currently. So we can just right click and get actor location. So now we have the location of the player and of the actor we want to look at. If we drag out of the get actor location for the player, we can then find look at rotation. That one goes into start and target is the location of the actor we want to look at. So this is now going to find the rotation to look at our target from the player. And this rotation here now is what we want to set the camera's rotation to be. So if you just want the camera to snap, what you can very easily do is right click, get player controller, drag out of this and set control rotation. Connect that into the delay here and the new rotation goes in there. And that will then work perfectly for you. This is just going to snap the camera to look at where we want to look at. But I want to give it a nice smooth feel. So we're not going to do this yet. So what we'll do is we'll drag that over just to give us some nice space here. And we're going to do a little bit more code here just to give us a nice smooth transition. What we'll do is out of the fine look at rotation, we're going to go into an R interp 2. And that doesn't want to go into, into current. That wants to go into target. So our target is that location and our current can simply just be get control rotation. So where the camera is currently facing is the current and the target is where we want it to face. Obviously that makes perfect sense. The delta time we can just do as get world delta seconds and then the interp speed is how fast you want it to move. So essentially how smooth it is. So in the intro video I set it to five. So that's what I'm going to have it as. And you can mess about with this value to get it perfect for you. And then the return value of this, we can set into the set control rotation, like so. So now it's going to actually smoothly interpolate the value of where we're currently looking to where we want to look at a speed of 5. And it's going to set where we're looking for that. Now, at the current moment, it's just going to do it once. It will just move us like one frame over closer to it. So what we want to do is drag out a set control rotation. And we'll get a reroute node. And then we're going to drag that into the beginning of the branch. And then we'll double click this again to get another root node to keep it nice and organized. And now this will then perfectly rotate us to look towards it. However, this is going to continue looping and doing this code even when it's not moving the camera anymore. Or if we try to move the camera again, it will keep making us constantly face it. So if you want the player to just be constantly looking at it, then this would work for you. However, if you were going to do that, you'd probably want to increase this delay a little bit so it's not as fast. But I also imagine you probably don't want to do that anyway. So now what we're going to do is we'll move this all out a little bit here to give us some more space. And I'll double click this to get some root nodes as well. And then off of then one of this initial sequence we got, we'll get another delay. And out of this, we will set should loop to false like so. And actually what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to move this up just to give us some more space here. I think this will make it a little bit easier for us. We'll move this back like so. The delay here, I'm going to set to one second. And then what we're going to do is again another delay after that of 0.2 seconds and set should loop to true again. So what this is going to do 
is one second after we start looking at it, it's going to stop the loop so that we stop looking at it. And that's just to give us enough time. You can increase this or decrease this if you need to, but this is just to give us enough time to then cancel this loop so it stops doing this code. And then 0.2 seconds after that, it will re-enable it again so that we then can do this looking at code once again. And that is it working perfectly for us. So again, what it's going to do is simply just get where we're currently looking, get the angle we need to look at, and smoothly go to that angle. And once we've finished, it will stop doing that code and then re-enable it so we can do it again if we want to. I'm going to select all this, hit C to comment it, and call this look at, and then I'll compile, save this, close it, and now we can have a look to see if it works. So the first thing we need to do is actually drag this into level. So get BP target, put it where you want the player to look. So again, where this actor is, is where you want the player camera to be looking. So I want it to be there where I've got that player over there. Then you can see on the right, we have default collision transform. We can now move the box collision here to be where we want the player to be walking through in order to actually trigger this camera. So you can see perfectly here, as I'm changing these values, it's also moving this box here. It's gone a bit too far. Let's put it back like this. And then we'll increase the size to five as well. I think that was good, maybe three. And then I'll move it down a little bit as well. So again, as you can see now, when we walk through this box here, it's gonna make the player look over here. And this is why it's good to have it in a, a variable like this, because then if I add in another one, I can have the player look over here if they go through a different box collision over there. In actual fact, just to show that working as well, I will put another one here too. So let me set this one up as well. Now we can see what's going to happen is when we walk through this box collision, we'll look over here. If we walk through this box collision, we'll look over here. So let's press play and see this working. So let me look over here slightly, walk forward, and you'll see that we're going to then look towards perfectly over here as well. That worked. And if we go over here too, just to shoot, show we can have more than one, you see we're now looking over here. So this is working perfectly and I should be able to go through these boxes again to trigger it once again as you can see perfectly like so and if you wanted to add a sound effect for that as well so for example if this was maybe for a jump scare what you can do is very simply open up the blueprint again for the player blueprint that is so we'll go to characters third person blueprints bp third person character what you can do is just off event look at here get a play sound 2d or play sound at location whichever one you would prefer so you can have the location be the target here so where it actually is you're looking at or just 2d and then let's just do collapse here i believe this is actually really loud so let me just lower the volume here to 0.3 for example and then what we should see is this will now play a sound as well if i were to hit play walk through it again we'll get a sound playing while also looking at this character we have over here but let's look at it this way, walk forwards, and we got that really great sound effect while looking over this direction. And the same thing will happen over here as well. So this is why it would be really good for maybe a jump scare if you want to do something along those lines. But I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've set up a system in which when we're walking through something, it will make the camera look at a certain location, which would be great for anything. Again, like maybe a jump scare, a hint, looking towards something for the story, anything along those lines, this will work perfectly for you. And you can use this and you can use this blueprint multiple times in a level and have it trigger multiple times as well, or just once if you wanted as well. And yeah, another point as well, if you do want this to happen just once, what you can do is open up the third person character. And after this set should loop here, what you can do is drag out of target and just simply destroy actor like so. And that will mean that it will only be triggered once. So let's hit play just to prove this once again and show it working. We'll walk through. It's going to look over, play the sound effect. And then if I were to try and walk through it again, it's not going to do the same thing. See, I can walk through the exact same location and it's not going to happen more than once. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really helps me and the channel a lot. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.